Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Colette Castor. She is the executive director for the Professional Animal Auditor Certification Organization, otherwise known as PACO. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. When most business owners hear the words audit, it tends to send shivers up their spine, yet your group, PACO, is training auditors to work in livestock production. What exactly is your role? So the role of PACO really is to provide a consistent training experience and a certification opportunity for auditors. And by that, um, then they become consistent in how to be an auditor and also the standards that are typical to each of the industry segments. And so if you come to, uh, to pork training, you sit through about eight hours of curriculum. You have a prerequisite online training. And then we spend time in both the sow unit and um, usually a couple of grow finish units too. Now that's all well and good for the auditor, but what does a pork producer need to understand about these auditors that want to come out to their farm and talk with them about different standards for animal welfare, for example? So I think the most important thing is that they need to feel comfortable that they're dealing with a professional. And so typically the auditors are being sent there to them by their customer and they need to feel that when an auditor comes in that they know the rules of the game, right? That the auditor has been properly trained, is properly credentialed, which is really what PACO does, and that the producer and the auditor are gonna be on the same page as far as what's the audit instrument and how the day is gonna go. Now, if you're talking about being audited for your taxes or maybe antibiotic compliance, that seems like a pretty black and white issue. I would imagine though that when it comes to animal welfare, there might be some subjectivity involved with that. How do you go about setting standards and enforcing them? PACO doesn't set the standards. Um, we'll use the pork industry as an example. Um, the typical audit instrument that we use is the common swine industry audit. And so our training curriculum is based around that. And to your point, there are some things that are very black and white. Do you have biosecurity signage? Have you done training for your, um, your operation? There are some things, um, for example, animal benchmarking qualities, where it's on a scale or somebody has to do scoring where there's the potential for more subjectivity. Mm -hmm. And so there we try to use a lot of pictures, a lot of examples. Um, we work closely with producers to get examples of those for the training so that when an auditor comes in, it's laid out as clearly as it can be. And these audits uh, are done with advance notice or do you just show up at the door to check on the producer? Depending on the customer that, that is um, typically scheduling the audit, some people will schedule unannounced. Now unannounced is usually unannounced within a framework, right? So they say, I know that I'm going to have an audit in the next two weeks, but I don't know what day it's going to be. With pork and biosecurity, it can't be too unannounced because of course you have to be sure that they're following the biosecurity requirements of the farm. Um, so most typically it's scheduled, you know that on a sow farm they're going to be in there for, you know, a good half a day, a growth finish site, an hour and a half to two hours. Training auditors is one thing, but it takes, I think, a special kind of person to be an auditor on a livestock operation. What are you looking for in, in people before you start to train them? So PACO has requirements. Before somebody can be certified, they have to have a combination of education and experience. You don't have to have an advanced degree. But if you don't, you have to have a lot of years of relevant experience before we'll consider you for certification. Then you have to go through the training, you have to pass an examination, then you have to do shadow audits with an existing certified auditor so that you are out in the field, in the real world, um, conducting the audit. And only then, after all that, can you be certified. So with a pork auditor, we'd be typically looking for somebody who's worked in the industry. Oftentimes it's people kind of at the end of their career that want to do something with some time flexibility. Um, and that's who we'll see that often want to become auditors. That's been my experience that pork producers are a proud but also very independent bunch. What kind of a reaction have you been getting from producers when you visit their farms? Well, I can speak to my experience even before I came to PACO, which was just a year ago. And as the industry was starting to recognize that we needed this kind of training and documentation, producers were understandably pretty wary about it because everybody thinks they're doing a good job and nobody wants somebody kind of walking around critiquing what you do, right? So um, it took a while to get producers comfortable. Luckily, many of them had the background of PQA+, they had done assessments and we kind of had a transition time with the industry. 
And then, um, in my experience, what it took was for a few producers who had been through the audit to stand up in producer meetings and say, you know what, this wasn't that bad. Um, here's you know, the preparation that I had to do. Porkboard has a ton of resources for producers. And um, kind of once you get accustomed to it and get started, it's really it's not as bad as typically they think it's going to be. And I guess we should make clear that these audits or being subjected to an audit is voluntary, but it's kind of the price of admission today if you want to sell pigs. I would say that's true for the most part because most larger packers have a requirement by their customers that their plants and now their farms are having some kind of oversight, some kind of auditing oversight. So that's the way that's transitioned. Um, they have the same requirements in food safety and environment and work, worker conditions, all that kind of thing. So this is kind of the next step. Tell me about the different auditing programs that your auditors are involved with in the pork industry. Like I said, we use the common swine industry audit as the main training um, instrument, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't go and conduct an audit for American Humane or Certified Humane or GAP. So we're really training them to be auditors using that instrument as an example. So we've talked about auditor training. What tips would you have for producers when one of your trained auditors is coming out to their farm? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So they should not worry too much. I mean, everybody would, would worry a little bit. Um, gather their documents together. So there's a pretty long list of documents that are required in any kind of an audit. Um, luckily, you know, Pork Board and everybody recognize in the common swine industry audit that people are just starting to put together that kind of documentation. and so. And um, what kind of documentation are we talking about? Every, Not the whole long list, but yeah, give me an example, um, please. Training records, um, that you have a program for zero tolerance of any kind of um, animal cruelty, um, an emergency action plan, what happens if there's, what happens with the animals if there's fire, a tornado, that kind of thing. Now, I would think that in turn, producers now have to do a lot of training for their personnel. Uh, is that something that they're just left to their own devices to do, or are there programs in the industry to help them train people to comply with the specifications that you are auditing? Pork Board has put together a really nice template of documents and examples that people can use. So the thing that you would train on is if you had um, an animal well-being or an animal welfare program, and then you would train your employees. Where it gets kind of funny is if you have you know, a two-person operation and it's two brothers, and so they're always like, oh, am I gonna train and train my brother who I've worked with for 30 years? Um, but in the bigger operations, there's usually really um, formal training programs that people go through and it's well-documented. Now we've talked about pig care or animal welfare. Are there other aspects of a pork operation that your auditors might be targeting? Yes, um, they kind of fall outside of PACO, but we go ahead and train on them in swine because it's part of the common swine industry audit. And specifically those areas are um, biosecurity and pork safety. So you could kind of argue that they have some indirect relationship with animal welfare. Um, but like I said, we go ahead and, and go through those modules, train them how they're gonna look at things, whether it's you know needles, biosecurity, uh, record keeping since that's such an important part of um, any kind of medication use. Well, it sounds like your organization is doing a good job of raising the bar for the industry and ensuring a lot of consistency. Well, I mean, my philosophy is that is exactly that. So not to raise the bar so high that people can't get there, but to, you know, float all the boats higher and um, to try to, you know, demonstrate continuous improvement as the industry and that we're being responsive and we're listening to our downstream customers and making changes.